after the Templars had defeated the Cathars. They returned north to Paris after a year of campaigning. In that year, there was a change in leadership in the, with the French crown being uh, passed over to the son of the king, with the old king dying. With this new king came greed and lust for power, and he saw an easy target in the Templars, being a foreign army in his land, and he had, saw threat as well from this exact same factor. He believed that they would take power away from him because of his impious ways. So he hatched a plot to dispose of them. Hey Legionnaires and welcome back. We're here with part 3 of the mini-series for the Templars. I hope you enjoyed the little intro that I put there to keep you up to date with what has happened in between the two episodes. So yes, we have a new king of France. He is uh, younger and greedier and is not so pious and fears this foreign army, this foreign holy army on his lands. And uh, he believes that they may sub well, not, uh, subdue him because he is not as uh, holy and pious as his predecessor, his father. So he wants to get rid of them. So he's hired a mercenary army to deal with them. He doesn't want to use French troops to implicate uh, French involvement in in the plot so he's going to try and remove the templars with a paid army a paid well pay, obviously a, a paid mercenary army we'll call it like that because you don't have well all armies are paid but anyway yes the templars are now encamped they're all scattered around around like uh, these buildings here this is, like represent that are in the buildings and we have the cavalry over here in the forest they've got their horses attending to their horses in the forest and we've got all troops all the way back here we've got the uh, like the uh, the Temple master, you could say, of the uh, of the Paris Templars here, and we have they're just uh, awaiting orders from their Grand Master on what to do next, whether to uh, go back to Paris or to go to Rome or whatever, whatever orders you know the Templars have currently. Um, but yes, they are about to be attacked by the mercenary forces of France. So I hope you guys enjoy, and we and I'll uh, well see you in the next episode. Well, not see you in the next episode, but we'll see. See how this one goes. So here we go. But yes, it's going to be the first charge here. So we'll see what happens in this engagement. So will the mercenary army be able to subdue the Templars? And will they be uh, able to crush this Templar force? There are others, there are other Templars in, Par in France, sorry. But the Paris Temple is one of the strongest and largest. Obviously being in the capital. So we have... a. Uh, we have Routiers here, Routiers Lancers going in here, which are like, Routiers are kind of like uh, rebel, ex-rebel, uh, rebel, rebel ex-soldiers, that's what I'm trying to say. They're former soldiers who've become rebels, basically. So they've charged in there, they've kind of got a bit massacred by uh, these uh, dismounted hospital knights. They've got a lot of those, these archers, they broke them, the crossbows are already gone, the crusaders. We now have a, a charge here from the dismounted hospital knights on some dismounted chevaliers. We also have another attack going on here. So some free company, which is again another free company, are again are like mercenary uh, ex-soldiers who are like part of the army. Then they've kind of gone rogue. So they're fighting some hospitaler knights out here in the forest. And they're kind of getting surrounded by these free company. I won't lie, they could be in a bit of trouble here. But we have another line of defence. So it looks like the cavalry has engaged over here as well. So they caught the Templars unawares in the forest here. The Templars and the hospitalers. And we have three company lancers in here, so they are, they're going to be pretty nasty. They're the strongest cavalry they've got. Uh, we have some, they're not general bodyguard, we've got spear sergeants going in. I think the general is in here. Okay, the general is in here for uh, the mercenaries. We are using Toulouse as the uh, as the faction that like to represent the mercenaries, mainly because they're free company and also because, uh, well, they have like routiers. And they're just, they're kind of French. They're kind of French looking. Um... But yeah, so it looks like this unit of Dismount Hospital Knights losing as uh, the as we have uh, units of Dismounted Chevaliers going behind. So that is a bit rough. So we've got, yeah, Dismounted Chevaliers early. These guys are getting focused. Oh, well, not focused down, but like chopped down. Oh gosh, that guy there. Look at these guys. They're hiding in, I presume this is supposed to be like a haystack or something. But yeah, they're like, it's kind of funny. 
Um, we now have the general coming in here. A great charge from the Templar general. Coming to the aid of his brothers. Shouting Deus Vault as he goes. God wills it. God wills it. Yes, and they just plowed through. So let's we'll go and check on what's going on on the other side. So just put the hood up. So we're holding them here um, in the center. I'm start now starting to flank with dismounted Templar Knights. We've now got the main boys in here. The main boys are coming in. In red and white. Glorious. But we do have a charge here from the Rutiers. They have got through and they're going to attack my Crusader Marksman. And yeah, these guys are... they. These Rutiers are not strong, but they'll certainly get through these uh, Marksmen no problem. Look at that. Look at that banner there. I've not even seen that. That banner is awesome. Just as it goes down, of course. But yeah, if you saw that banner, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, the Rusi is here. Absolutely getting cr uh, crushing these archers. We'll go back to normal speed. And here we go. We've got a charge from the Crusader Spearman here. Going into free company. Just going to hold them up. Keep them at bay. I thought this would be a good idea. Keep these guys at bay. And then I can send in swords here. We've got more dismounted Templar Knights. They've come from the reserve. All the way back at the far uh, village, these guys have arrived. But we have men fleeing already. And But the general is breaking units over here. This is really good. So, But yeah, we do have men fleeing for their lives. Here, to be precise, we have dismounted hospital knights. This is very ungodly. Being chopped down. A sad, sad sight. But yes, we do have a crusader marksman here. In combat, we have dismounted Templar Knights. I do like how some of them have axes. That's not very much like a Templar. I don't think a Templar would really use axes. But the Rusiers are breaking. He's trying to pull them out. And they're, they're going to break because of that. So we have dealt with that threat there. And the Crusader Marksmen live to see another day. They can now fire into the rear of these uh, free company if they wanted to. But I think they're going to fire at the archers in the back over there. We've got Crusader crossbows here as well. Don't actually know if they're firing. Nope, they're... Okay, no, they are firing, just not very quickly. Crusader Spears, a sergeant's here. I'm not Crusader. Crusader Spears holding up against uh, sergeants. No, it is Crusader Sergeants. I, I got that wrong. The Free Company Footman. I didn't think they. I thought they were just called Crusader Spearmen, to be honest. But sergeants, it is. But you can see here, yeah, these longbows here focusing down into the back of these Free Free Company. Doing that, doing a little bit here and there, just focusing these guys down. The general in the back over here still doing damage. He's getting a lot, a lot of kills. He's basically saving his flank. Um, he's doing an excellent job here. Being a true Templar, saving his brothers. And here we go. Going to have a great charge here. Let's follow this charge. Uh, of course, we get someone in the very back. But let's see as it goes in. Oh! Excellent. And these guys are into the back. And they've just cleared up. They've saved those hospitals, their brothers in arms. And this left flank is now secure because of that general. Or the... Extreme left. We have a uh, crossbow sergeant unit that's still here, but that's not the end of the world. Though this unit here is still in danger, we could do with saving these hospitalers. Save them from an ungodly doom. The cavalry, on the other hand, is still going pretty uh, well. I'd say it's actually go not going our way. We're losing this fight here. We've got hospital knights losing here against rutiers and spears. The general out here is uh, in combat with Templars. Looking excellent. But the cavalry here has uh, fled, so now the Toulouse has a cavalry unit free. He has spears free. I mean, it is root here. I'd definitely be going for crossbows. Uh, and archers at this point, trying to level up. I mean, balance power is not in their favor now. It is about, they are about 50% behind the Templars, which are in combat down here, and they look awesome. Great to see these guys fight alongside their mounted comrades. It's a shame I can't bring an army of these guys, because I would, just so you have an army of Templars, so it actually looks properly, like, very good. Yes, it does look like the mercenaries are going to be beaten back here on this side now. Uh, especially with the general coming over. I mean, he's just clearing up stuff here. We've got a small unit dismounted chevaliers here, uh, which is like high. And they're a shock unit. And look at these. Here we go. In come the hospitalers, chopping away. 
Take these guys down. Take these guys down. Excellent. Come on, you can take them on. 2v1. No, apparently not. Where's our general? Oh, the general's gone into the back here and fighting these, uh... These Rutias did actually get to the crossbows. But the, uh, crossbows with the help of the general are winning decisively. Dude, this general's done an excellent job. It's done an excellent job. And now we have the cavalry freed. This cavalry unit got freed up here. It won this fight with the help of the Templars. And it's now able to come in behind. It's more Templars coming to the aid. To the aid. These mercenaries are just not up to the, uh, up to the... Well, they're not able to beat the Templars, basically. They're the godly host of the Templars is able to win the day, it looks like. And there we go. The Templars are victorious here as well, it would seem. And they are looking like it's just a general left, along with some spears. They're just barely holding on. And we have some uh, free company over here. Let's watch as these guys make a last stand. I just love watching, like, the Kingdom of Jerusalem with their units. I mean, they look amazing. So, I mean, it's a shame that they don't have, like, more units, p potentially. More, like, Templar and sort of units would be very cool. You could add the uh, Knights of St. Lazarus, which are, like, a leper. Uh, a leper order. So, they're, like, warrior lepers. It's They're actually a thing. Um, definitely would look it up if I, if I haven't, like, just... Slap something on the video. Definitely look them up. They are quite cool. Um, and they helped the uh, Templars in, in the Holy Land. They were another Holy Order. That would be a unit that they could definitely add. Um, that would be pretty cool. And then it means I can use more Holy Order units. Along with Hospitals and Templars, you'd have St. Lazarus. Who doesn't want the lepers? An army of lepers. That would be pretty cool. But yeah, they, they they wore masks, so you wouldn't actually really know that they... They were kind of like... Well, they wore helmets with ma masks on, so you wouldn't know that they were lepers, really. But if you know what the army... Uh, the Order of St. Lazarus is, you'd know that they're lepers. But here we go. The final unit is going to be these free company. The general is... Uh, the mercenary general has fallen or retreated. And that is it. The, arm, the mercenary army is beaten. But the Templars did lose a lot of men. Um... It was, a, it was at a cost. A close victory for the Templars. Um, they lost over 700 men. So that's going to be hard for them to recoup being a Holy Order. You can't just... It's not like a normal army. You can't just enlist and, uh, and join the Templars. There's a lot of training you have to do to become a monk. And then a, a trainee. And then an actual Templar. So many years. So it would actually take a long time for them to recoup these losses. So yes, the Templars have been attacked by the French army. But with a mercenary army. But... It will soon be known to them that the French were in cahoots, or the French king was in cahoots, and they will start to suspicious, have suspicions over what the French king will do next. So if you want to see what the French king is going to do next, do check in on part four, which will be out next week on Friday. Um, I'm going to try and bring this series out every Friday, um, apart every Friday. So if you want to see what happens in the next episode of this mini-series, then please... Uh, what, well, what, look for it next Friday. Look for the next episode is all I can say. But yeah, there are the end results. The General getting 299 kills. The um, Templar Knight taking 222. Probably the best units. Um, for the uh, well, the Free Company Army or the Mercenary Army, uh, probably 109 from these Dismounted Chevaliers. Pretty damn good. 65 from the Marussia Lances. Not bad. And the General getting 50 kills. It's not awful. 85 actually as well for that Free Company. So they didn't do too bad. Um, they did have a, like, a bit of a mixed army, but they are supposed to be a ragtag mercenary army put together to try and subdue them for a cheap cost, but uh, it was not to be. So now the Templars will march back to Paris uh, after being attacked to basically get security. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode of this let's uh, this mini series. So if you want to see that, please do leave a like, subscribe, and a comment to keep up with your support. And until next time, guys.